Welcome back to the channel. Guess what? We got another third gen Camaro on the channel. This makes number three. We're gonna do some floors and some frame tie-ins and I'm gonna show you guys little by little. But first, let's meet Chris. Chris, how you doing? What's up, what's up, Steve? Nice how you doing? You, man. Tell us a little bit about the car, how you got it, you know? Was it uh, too much money or? It was too much money, but yeah. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> I found your channel. And I, and I saw that you could fix anything, so here we are. Yeah. Bought this thing sight unseen. Sight unseen. So what, sight somebody unseen. had it on, like, Facebook Marketplace somebody, or something? Yep, somebody had it on Facebook Marketplace. They actually wanted $4,500 for this car. Oof. I talked them all the way down to 22 And wait wait till we show them on the channel. And wait till we show them what we did. What, what you found and why it's like, yeah, that's too much money. <laughs> Let's show you some of the work I got to do. That piece is, is going down. Look at that. It is all rot. Yabba dabba do. It all, <laughs> it all had to be cut out, so they've got this kind of just rigged in there a little bit. Uh, in the back seat, he, uh, before he found me, he found somebody that uh, said they can do something, and look, they all they did. This, to me... I don't know if you guys have seen this stuff before like this, but this to me looks like furnace cement. This is exactly what that looks like. I used to do heating and cooling, and that looks like furnace cement that's being used to cover up the whatever. Not the I, I can't even tell if that, that's welded or horrible, horrible tack weld. Like somebody forgot to have the argon gas on. But we're going to pound this down a little bit more, maybe rip it back out complete and start over. But we've got floors to do, and we're going to do subframe tie-ins. That's tar in there or something, too, man. Oh, yeah, we got some roofing tar in there, too. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that hole up there. Right into the fender well. What the heck is that? So what year What year in all that is it? It's an 84 Z28. Uh... You're positive it's not an IROC, right? Just a Z28? I'm positive. Uh, Z28 all over this thing. It's a carb 305 factory. What year again? 84. 84? Where's... Oh, they don't have the sticker. So Chris is going to have me put some floors in it. We're going to do some subframe tie-ins on it and stuff like that. And I'm getting ready to show him now uh, what the metal looks like. And you can join me on that. Uh, let's get the metal out and show them what we're going to put in. All right. Chris had to run, and I was going to show you. I want to show you guys. We're still going to show you the metal. <clears throat> so here's the metal that I bought. <clears throat> I want you to see this is eighth inch thick. It is a little on the heavy side, but it's definitely going to hold, and that's one by two and a quarter. These here... These long ones here will go along the side of the car from right about in there somewhere. Uh, it'll come all the way over right to the end there. And then there'll be, I put a bar like that straight across. And then I do another bar at a 45 like that. And then I do the same thing back here, but I work it so it gets to the trailing arm and uh, ties in. So. What happens is I end up extending the bolt for the uh, the rear trailing arm, or control arm. Um, extending the bolt, making it longer, getting a nice grade 8 bolt. So that it goes through the frame, subframe tie-in all the way over to the controlling arm, <coughs> control arm, trailing arm, whatever. <clears throat> I'm losing my mind here. Yeah, we're going to pull both seats out. We're going to get a look over there. He says it's not too bad on that side over there. We're going to patch up as much as we can. Oh! Yep, I think we're going to end up doing a little more than some patching over here, too. I uh, definitely am not cool with that. We're going to get the seats out and stuff like that today. Probably get a little, get into it a little bit with wire wheeling it and cleaning it up and... Um, 
cutting out whatever we don't need and start uh, replacing some pieces and parts with some stainless steel that I got. And uh, most importantly, the first piece I'm going to work on is right there on the driver's side floor. So we'll work on that and get that tied in, make it look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner uh, than what it does now. But uh, I got some other things going on real quick. Let's see what we can get done in a day, especially being that we're going to have a nice day like it looks like it's going to be. I didn't even watch the weather yet, so let's jump on that and uh, let's get to it. <laughs> so I got a seat out. There we go. I got a seat out and this is going to be some work. So I got that piece of metal out there. We can get a better look at what's going on here. <clears throat> and it, it's not going to be too hard to fix what we got to fix. I don't like this spot right here. I don't like any of that area right there. <clears throat> That's definitely going to be adding some metal and cleaning it up and doing the best I can. This here, somebody, this is somebody put... This is like a piece of bed frame. This is this is a piece of bed frame. Uh, the angle iron from a bed frame. As you can see, there's some angle iron. So we're gonna clean that all up, take that piece back off. Uh, I've got a little better something to throw in there. Clean, cut off this weld here. Oh, look at that. You see where I smashed my thumb. Uh, grind all that down as much as I can. I don't care how high up I got to go, but yeah, this is, I'm going to have a floor in here. We're going to make this look a lot better and presentable. And then uh, we'll do a little bit over there on the passenger side. All right, well, let's get to it. We've got lots of work to do here. I got a lot of wire wheeling and cleaning and cutting and stuff to do. And then, oh, on the seat. So we've got this here and this here on the seat, but we don't have anything on this side. You can see it's it's broken off or cut off or whatever. And uh, here too. I might even have something laying around in the garage from one of the old seats off of her car. So we'll see what I got laying around and go from there. All right, so I got that old angle out and got my own. And, and you can see that's one by two and a quarter and it's eighth inch thick. And you see I got a little bit of an angle so that it rides up that wall over there. And it's flush on this end. I just kind of set it there in place. And what I'm gonna do, ow, what I'm gonna do is Get this where I want. I'm gonna C-clamp it real tight so I can get a couple of sp a, a nice bead right here in the middle, and then uh, go around there and then around on this end, and uh, start building off that subframe. Uh, I got a lot of wire wheeling to do over that, but uh, there's still a lot of cleaning going on. I'm kind of just bouncing around a little bit here, guys, gals, people of the car world that like to watch my videos. So, oh, you see what time it is? Let's get this new piece in here and, uh, and then maybe even get some bolts welded to it, some studs like, uh, like this and that one. So we have somewhere to mount, get the seat mounted. And you seen how I cut it. I got that welded across there. Now it looks kind of weird cause I like to grind my welds down, you know, stuff like that, but go ahead, give that a smack. That's solid. So, and you can see I did some grinding, got rid of some of the rust. Got a lot more cleaning to do, but I just wanted to kind of show that right there. That this is in there. It ain't going anywhere. That's going to be the end of it for this video. Uh, like I was telling you earlier, I got to go help out a friend who has a limo company. Because uh, I have a Class A CDL. Um, I got a friend who's got a, he's got a big party bus going on tonight, so I got to go help out with that. I'm going to leave off with this right here where we're at on the floor. Uh, I got some more 
stuff to do, but I'm not. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm cleaning my mess up right now and getting ready to go and have some, you know, lunch or whatever before I get out the door. Glad you guys are still being kind and good to one another and trying, as I was sta stating earlier. Trying is more than half the battle. So, just like GI Joe, knowing is half the battle. And uh, we'll go through it step by step, and I'll show you how to get all those curves and bends that are in there and stuff like that. And uh, that's it. So. We'll see you next time. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Jamie's here. Say hi. Hi. And uh, I'll tell you, um, Chris from uh, Instagram, uh, 84 Chevy, I think, something along those lines. This is Instagram. Uh, I'll put it down here. Um, I'm surprised you got the car here. Uh, as you guys seen, let me show you a couple things. You got the old cap off? Yep. Yeah, let's take a look at that underneath there. Look at that. The button is completely gone and missing. Look at, can you, I don't know if that's coming up on camera. There's a bunch of corrosion in there. Where's the sun? Yeah, look at all that. Look at those ends. That is horrible. So I'm surprised this damn thing even ran to get here. That there's only one vacuum, and that's off the back of the intake here. Uh, being used for the brake booster and for the heater control inside. There's nothing else being used vacuum or the advanced Yeah, the vacuum advanced nothing on nothing is proper Some of you know that there's a damp a dampener down there or uh, some type of butterfly on the exhaust Which I've always ripped off because they're always frozen. That one is also frozen so we're gonna see if I can't make it stick open so that it's breathing properly but that rotor button and the timing and the vacuum everything is just so far off on this so we got new cap and rotor to put on it and um, we're gonna get that on I got uh, a vacuum port so he's got this plate here uh, to have that Holly carburetor on there or somebody did it but I'm gonna drill a hole right here in the middle of the front and then put this fitting on so that there's a constant vacuum uh, so that that will that can stay the same for the brake booster and for the heater inside but uh, there also needs to be vacuum on some of these other ports this is so crazy but I wish I would have got film or video of him pulling up and pulling in I know this is way more above and beyond than what he needed just for floors but I love Camaros and do all this uh, because I love it that much so I love these cars. They're great. This is the new cap? Yeah. All right, let's get the cap on, get the wires ran, get the car back on. We'll be right back. So, we got a whole bunch of stuff to do today, and right now what we're doing, and uh, I'm actually thinking just because this is just an easy little quick tune-up and a couple things that I'm doing, I'll probably just make this uh, bonus footage. So here's your bonus footage, 84 Camaro, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're dropping, losing concentration too easily, picking this stuff up. This is the plate that the carb sits on, and it's just an adapter, so you can put a holly onto your stock intake from back then. I already drilled my hole for the vacuum piece, and now we've got a tap, tap and die set, and I'm just working the tool so that it puts threads on. Is that the money maker? That's it. That's it. So we just need some thread tape and... I got thread tape right here. Yeah. Let's watch the dyslexic guy do it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee he does it backwards. Watch people. Yep. Oh, he's doing it right. 
there is a right way and a wrong way to put and thread tape on your threads. <laughs> there isn't there, there really is. Every time. Don't let anybody fool you. There is a right and wrong way to do it. And the trick is, is to make sure that you're tightening as you're wrapping your thread tape on. So that way as you're tightening in, it's not loosening the thread tape off. It's in there. So now we've got a good vacuum port. All right, so check this out. We got the carb and the plate back on. You can see there's the vacuum line that we added so that we actually have it grabbing for the PCV valve and supplying vacuum for the uh, heater HVAC controls inside the car. We got a hot going for the electric, uh, electric choke. Right. We got the cap and rotor on. Is that it? We're ready? Yeah. Oh. Holy cow! It doesn't. You know, that's a, a thousand times better. All right, let's get some fine tuning on this pig. going to check timing, adjust a couple other things, and that should do it. We'll be right back. Well, that's it. We're done. We uh, partially helped fix what somebody didn't do correctly. <laughs> At least there's vacuum going to things that should have vacuum now, instead of just the brake booster. Um... If you didn't know, there's little plug-offs that you can get for these EGR tubes. You can pull those out. They have little plugs that you can get and screw in there and get rid of these all together. And then uh, there's still that valve down there on the exhaust that I got to... Yeah, put headers on it, right. But uh, I'm going to uh, fix that exhaust leak. If you listen, you can hear it. That's because of that valve not being able to open or close, so we're going to make it stick open and weld that leak where the pipe is cut right by the Y, and that'll shut this thing down, and it will sound so much better. I'm sure Chris will be very happy to see this when he gets here. Well, next week, whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. I got some 3M spray we can probably throw in that, too. Thanks, Jamie, for coming by and taking a look at that. Gotta go to work now. <laughs> now you got more stuff to do at your shop. I got an Acadia, 3.6, timing chains. Oh, Almost boy. Done. Gotta put it back together. All right. Let's wrap up this video.